Dugal was a blacksmith and content to be so. But fate and destiny had other plans for the only man to ever slay a dragon. War rages everywhere, and the burden he carries weighs heavy. But the knowledge of his approaching destiny weighs heavier. Sweet dreams of days at the forge are lost in the search for the Lady of the Axe. He must find her, for the fate of many depends upon it, and so does his. Dragon Eye. Chapter One Raven's Field It was the call of the ravens that brought him back. How long the warrior had stood drawing great heaving breaths into his lungs was unknown to him. Raising a weary arm, he unhooked the strap, then pushed off the helmet, allowing it to fall to the gorby spattered ground at his feet. Despite the fatigue that tried to hold him still, he straightened up and gazed all around. As far as he could see, the only living things in this valley besides himself were the ravens feasting on the dead. Thousands lay dead, both of the southern legions and of the king's army. A heavy sigh escaped his lips as, leaning in on his great sword for support, he reached down and scooped up his helmet. With a visible effort, he managed to get the sword into the scabbard that rode at his back. Only then did he turn around to see the fate of the king. The king lay dead, along with his two sons, mere paces from where he stood. They called me the Dragon Eye, the warrior who cannot be killed, the one man who could protect them, keep them alive. He paused to gaze at them for a moment. I guess they were half right. He took the fallen king's sword from his hand and stuck it in the ground, lifted the broken crown and hung it on the pommel, then sadly turned away. I wonder, am I truly the only survivor, or could you have managed to save yourself? Let's see. He gave a piercing whistle, which was answered by a bugling call in the distance. A smile of delighted relief creased his weary face at the call. Come to me, my fine, bold lad, he whistled again, then saw the movement as the huge warhorse made its way toward him. When the horse reached him, he hung his helmet on the pommel, then used the last of his strength to swing into his saddle. Lucky it is the dragon scale that makes light armor, at least for me. A light touch on the rein set the beast in motion. He leaned over to pat the horse on the neck, We'll go northwest as my brothers did, Stump. That accursed empire has already eaten everything to the south and east. Come, my fierce warrior, let's go exploring. There's no point returning to this palace. The second legion outflanked us. There'll be nothing left here but rubble and signs of carted off slaves. No, it's the unknown lands of the northwest for us. The big horse gave a snort of agreement, then set out on an easy trot. As the warrior rode away, the camp followers and others moved out of the nearby forest and onto the field to begin looting the bodies, or looking for their beloved dead. <laughs> 